Fog Entertainment back again with another movie review. We're going back to 2014. Sadly, we, we just re recently reviewed Toy Story. Well, we're going downhill for Toy Story because we're going to Star Trek, but at least it's not as pish as Star Wars. And we've got the second one here, In the Darkness. And it is In the Darkness, right? Because I think the most overrated actor of all time, well, he's at least up there, right? He is in this movie, especially of the current age of acting, movies, TV shows, media. Whatever you want to call it. Benedict Cumberbatch. I don't like the shape of this guy's face. I don't like his eyes. I don't like his nose. I think the guy is just, in general, shite. I severely overrate it. And I just can't. I mean, he's basically the main villain in this. And seeing you just can't stand the guy. I mean, he's done nothing against me personally, apart from I've had to watch a lot of movies with this prick in it. And I, 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 just, I just never rated him. Like, you'll get these... Fucking fanboys out there, you know, that they're into all this uh, space shit and other shite, you know, Marvel shit. Oh, he's the he's the guy, he's the, he's the turner of time and fucking Spider-Man. Not that pish, man. Nobody cares about Spider-Man, right? But you, you'll get people out there that honestly think Benedict Cumberbatch is better than fucking Stallone and Swartz. And I gotta see those people, see those people, they need lined up and um, they need something dealt with them, right? Obviously, if I say something else, Fog Entertainment will have no chance of getting monetization here, so we'll just leave it at that. But, you know, in this movie, planets get blown up and there's a complete fucking annihilation. Maybe those people should be took to these planets. And uh, that should be done by any everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But Benedict Cumberbatch, I just, I just don't rate this guy. I really don't. And uh, I, I mean, I guess we'll get into him a bit later in the movie. I mean, he doesn't get introduced to quite a bit uh, into the movie, but that is what it is. But we do kick off the movie is like three years down the line of the offense of the, after the first one with Chris Pine's character Admiral uh, Hammes. James, whatever you want to call him, right? He says, of course, there's that line in the first one. It's like, become like the Admiral. You, you, it takes like four years, but he says, I'll do it in three. So it kind of like ties in here to a three year time skip. So we do eventually kick this movie off into darkness here with uh, Admiral James and uh, what's his name? Leonard McCoy. Leonard, that's his name, right? But we're on this planet, and I don't know, maybe if you're a nerd, you will know the, the total, like, Ex not explanation, but the, the total term for this planet, I don't know what it is, but it's this planet that's like 2,000 years behind every other planet, and basically in order to save them, uh, to save Spock, they have to like refuel the, the battleship, the, the ship that they're in, the fleet, I don't know what the name of the, the, the ship is to be honest guys, but yeah, that gets refueled, and then it turns out Basically, Spock and Admiral Hing get fucked by your main man, uh, and because of this, he's basically removed from Admiral position. And then we get, of course, uh, what's what's that guy's what's that guy called? The head guy. I'll know him if I see him. Bruce Greenwood, Christopher Pike. That's him. This guy's a bit weird to be honest. I've seen a movie that Gerald's game with this guy in it. Not really a uh, fucking hell. Peter Weller's age these days. Jesus, what is going on there? Not really 100% what's going on there, but basically, demotes Spock and Admiral, and then there's this big meeting, and basically, Admiral James puts two and two together, and oh fuck, this big meeting's happening, which means, that is where they're going to attack, and as he goes to a voice his opinion at this meeting, that is when Khan, Benedict Cumberbatch's character, extracts his revenge, attacks them all, there's like a, there's like a building getting blown up in London, it was just archives getting blown up and then that's why I quickly put that together with Admiral James. Um, and then yeah, basically he sees Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch's character can through like the ship and then like he teleports, that's how Can's been able to do it. Uh, Christopher Pike dies in this and then Peter Welder's character, Marcus, also has a daughter, Carol Marcus. Um, he basically, I, I kind of assumed at this point this guy's bad, but it turns out he killed like all of Khan's people, but there's like actually they're actually inside the nuclear warheads. But this whole movie's based around, and I don't know. I just thought the first one was much better. Like Chris Pine is really good in this movie. There is no two ways about it. I feel like I feel like most of the main cast that are like all aboard the Starfleet, like Scotty, Simon Pegg, brilliant, old Spock's good, young Spock's good. But there's just a lot of it you don't really care for. Like Pavel's good, uh, Ikaru's good. You know, I, I I do genuinely think that, that that's all good, but I just feel like with 
like, bats. like, it's just, like, oh, they're in the warheads, like, I mean, and then they capture him, and then, like, oh, no, we're having to go against, uh, Marcus, because he's the real bad guy, and then his daughter, she gets took off the ship, and then it looks like, in order to stop the ship from getting blown up, Admiral James, brother, he has to sacrifice himself, and he actually dies, Chris Payne, the main character here, dies, but... Of course, we found it like earlier in the movie that Cumberbatch's blood is like unique, so he doesn't feel pain. He heals like really quickly, and then that obviously prompts Leonard and like, well, why don't, why don't, why don't we use this? And then he does use it, and then Admiral James is survived, brother. Chris Pine is brought back to life, and yeah, I mean the movie ends on a high, so of course you're thinking, fuck, he's dead, which obviously would have um, sucked. Like it wouldn't, <laughs> it definitely wouldn't have been good for Chris Pine if he died here, but. You know, like, Benedict Cumberbatch's character's put back to sleep because, like, they kind of, like, align with him, then don't, and then, like, his kind, which are, like, immune to all pain and can survive hundreds of years, they're put back to sleep in their warheads. We did get, like, the final, like, a fight scene between Spock and Cumberbatch, which was alright, like, and then the ship crash lands. I don't know, I just, I just didn't really feel this movie, to be honest. I feel like the first one, I can't remember what I gave it, I think it was, like, a month ago. Like it was like a month ago I watched this movie, but here we're only getting around to review it now, and I'll have to watch the final one soon, but, I mean, people saying that this one's better than the first, and I think the first one was better, I gave the first like a 7, I feel like this one, I mean, you're, like the characters are more developed, but, I almost feel like with that, it's almost like an illusion to just kind of be a bit lazier with writing. And I kind of feel like that's what they do in this movie, Dear Degree, guys. But anyway, it is what it is. It's time to rate the movie. If I'm being honest, I'll give it a 5. It's an alright average movie, but I just... I wasn't really feeling it, guys. And it's a 5. I'm hoping Cumberbatch ain't in the third and final one, which I'll probably watch soon enough. But until next time, peace.